a man who is a basketball icon in the Show Me State, Coach Norm Stewart. A Missouri Tiger himself, Norm came back to his alma mater as head coach in 1967 and coached his Tigers for 32 seasons. He's Missouri basketball. When you, when you think of Missouri basketball, you got to think of Norm Stewart. Norm was a tremendous coach. His teams played great defense. They took good shots. And any time you played uh, Norm's team, you better be ready to play. He was a tough coach. He demanded a lot of us. I mean, we worked hard. We practiced hard. He's about winning, period. Nothing else. Norm Stewart, just an outstanding individual. Great coach. Great teacher of the game. That's the one thing that people try to forget sometimes is he really taught the game. He was a great coach because he was a great teacher, first of all. He was a character, no doubt about it. In a ball game one time, I called a timeout and uh, I asked the referee a question. He came over to me and I said, I'm not saying this, but I just asked you a question. He said, I understand. I said, what would you do if I called you a bad name? And he said, well, I call a technical. I said, well, I didn't say it. I just, what would you do? He said, okay. And I said, what would you do if, if, if I just thought it? He said, well, I can't do anything about what you're thinking. I said, all right. Then I think you're a man. I gave him a bad name. He called me a technical anyway. And I think that's where it started, you know. And here I was having a nice conversation with a good friend in the, in the officiating ranks. Back to our... We'd like to focus on the two guys at the heart of this rivalry. Of course, we're talking about coaches Lou Henson and Norm Stewart. They are the rivalry. I think they created the rivalry, and, and I know there's some inner stories from both of them about, you know, not having balls at practice or, you know, different things. They gave us six old basketballs. The balls looked good to me, but to Norm, they didn't. I remember before the game, he went to him and said that the dimples on the ball, they didn't feel right. That's coach. I mean, he, it was always something. You guys are trash, you know, and this is what you get to shoot with. And of course, my guys, I've always had smart guys, they started laughing. They said, Coach, we, you know, we don't need that. We're ready to play. The Stewart versus Henson rivalry went back even before the Bragg and Wright series. Lou remembers it was 1976. When I first came here uh, to Illinois, one of the first games we had, we had to go to Norm's tournament. We were going to take our photographer, and Norm said, don't worry about bringing your photographer. Hey, you can use our tape. And so uh, we played the game, and I made a comment about the officiating. And so the next morning, our manager went to get the tape, and the manager didn't have it. Then the assistant coach went to get the tape from one of the assistant coaches, and uh, the assistant coach said, Norm didn't like it because you complained about the officiating. You will not get the tape. That single moment when Norm didn't hand the tape over to Lou really sparked what would become one of the most intense rivalries in the history of Illinois basketball. Lou, his assistants, they never forgot that. And every single game after that, there was a shouting match between Norm and Lou. Norm and I kind of, we had words at half court. Now, I was going to fight Norm. Norm would have killed me. But there are the first two, three years, there's a little bit of friction between the two. But then we settled down and it was over. Norm also got a kick out of making Illinois change ends after pregame warm-ups had started. Well, that was customary. We did that to a lot of teams. A lot of teams did it to us. But in those days, the visiting team had their option. So we would just wait, let the home team go out, and then tell them to move. You know, that was always aggravating. Those two guys were tremendous personalities and colorful personalities, whether it was an orange jacket or a black and gold tie, I think their personas lent a lot to the rivalry. Uh, two very competitive guys that uh, I'm sure had a lot of fun with each other and, and had a lot of fun on the court. That's why rivalries start and become big deals because of the coaches and, and those are two of the best in the history of college basketball. Offensive possession is involved in the game. Good feed to Albert White. And it'll be a three-point attempt. He was fouled by Aaron Jack. Albert White has four quick points now, so a little better start offensively for Albert White tonight than he's been getting recently, and he ties the game at 12. It's important for Missouri to get Albert White involved in the game and also get late in the preseason as they got into conference play. He's getting the starts and playing more significant. The player he's made himself into. Fred, if you had seen him in, in high school, you would have never thought he'd have put in a day of basketball at the Division One level, especially at a school like Missouri. Now Albert White gets the jam. Albert finished to the season a year ago, but still coming off that A&M bench. Michael Smith got that three down. He's a sophomore from Toronto. And look at Drower. How about that was a camp shot right there. He had the perfect follow through going. Oh, Missouri did a great at dribble. Take a look at the dribble. A little juke fake up right there. Key on Dooley. 
Dilling didn't show you his full hop that time either. Boy, he can really get in the air. Missouri measures their verticals from a standing jump. They don't let them get a run up when they measure it, so everything they do is a little bit. Gerald Brown, the big guy, knocks down a three. There he is, the six. -eight. Washington called his ball club off the website at www.bigfrogsports.com. All correct entries will be entered into a drawing for a trip to see the Big 12 tournament. Nations Bank is leaner today, this year. Yeah, he does. And you know what? Brian Brower has more muscle on him, and that's a tribute to the weight program, I'm sure. Albert White has 10, covers him. Arch waving, looking at cutters. Has Brower wide open for a three, and he knocked it down. And Brower now has knocked down. Oh, the pressure the defense. They don't stretch it out a whole lot. Contain man to man. Try to keep it from slicing in the middle part of the lane. Well, I tell you what, Johnny Woods just knocked one down right there. John Woods, you could tell, just felt that shot. Well, he go, and Brower gets a long rebound after his tip out. That was a solid defensive play by Gerald Brown. He knocked Albert White off his feet. Unbound shot, didn't go down. They left Taper alone, and he knocks down a three. The 6 5 two, five points, and they out rebounded the Cowboys. So a good effort for Melvin Watson Club in midweek. Woods knocks down another three. Boy, the three point shooting ball, as good as I've seen in a long time. Missouri, six for seven. And the Aggies five for ten, and we have a 34-34 tie and a 20 seconds on paper. Just getting the ball back out front, you think to maybe set up the offense. He had to be back there to try to free up the shooter over in the corner. Ten on the shot clock. Nice entry pass to Schumacher, who got it stuffed and then came right back and got it. Paper set it up. Schumacher in time. Another deflection. Paper in traffic pulls it up, finds Grauer down the lane, and the shot is good. And Paper right back in the middle of it again. And Grauer having a great year. Missouri able to get the ball. Missouri up by two. Albert White gets a pick from Schumacher and knocks down a three. Albert White having a good first half here. 13 points for Albert White. And with his back to the basket, get the ball down low on the block. Take off the step out to outstanding coach in the state of Missouri. Grauer drops it down. Albert White goes to work. Quick turnaround shot. Good. 15 for Albert White in the first half of this ball game. Well, that's a great matchup. That pass as the pivot player is making his move. Albert White, nothing called, collision on the baseline. And now John Woods knocks down a tray, and he's having a good day. Three threes and 13 points for John Woods. He'll be at the free throw line. Monty Hard, 6'11", senior from Jeff City. Free throw, good. His first point of the day. Again, I really, and I'm sure you do too, admire the way he has made himself. A good health defense that time from Brower, who caused a deflection. Now off the baseline, the shot is good from John Woods. And Woods now has a dozen points in the first, make that 15 points in the first half. They're very out running the break, and when they run that break, John Woods will usually set up on the perimeter. Come inside the three-point line, but he got a wide open jump shot. Eight-point run now for AM. Here come the Tigers up four. Brower to Gilbert. Brower wide open from the corner, knocked down another tray. Brian Grower has four threes and four timelines. Quick a look in at the defense. Didn't take him very long to recognize it and get a good shot. Oh, what a nice catch in the jam from Johnny Parker for him. Quick a look in at the defense. Didn't take him very long to recognize it and get a good shot. Oh, what a nice catch in the jam from Johnny Parker for his first two points. Shoot Yankees, but they have the lead. Now Grower has to put it up wild and misses with it. And there's not going to be a shot at the end of the half. The horn goes off, and we've had a very active half here. Great shooting, both ball clubs. A much higher scoring game than you would have imagined going in, I would think. As A&M drops back in the zone, let's see if they find a shot around the perimeter here. There's the double team. Now they've got the wide open man from the corner. Johnny Parker knocks it down, and he has four points. A&M at Scott of Missouri Center. He is so quick inside, he had a layup. Now, Monty just took it away from the little guy. Got enough flesh to crowd front. They're out at the timeline. So it should be open the top. White picks it off the deck, and what a nice soft touch to get it up like that. Had to fight his way through the entire Texas A&M. The Texas A&M team will look a lot different and a lot better if they can get him going offensively. The guy who shoots well from the perimeter. And there's the shot coming out of the deep corner that time, and they've got the press beat. So Parker took it. Joe White and then made a nice speed ball. Made a nice speed and also pulled up. Rock out, but it's taken right back by Grower. Albert White back to Grower. Reverse layup to it. Excellent work by Grower. He has 16 points, matching his career high. Fred, the reason he was able to make that play, he is shadowing Clifton Cook all over the floor. Missouri's still trying to take the high-scoring guard out of the game for Texas gets the ball, but again, Grower is chasing Cook all over the floor anyhow. This time he picked him up before he got out on the break. A little give and go, and Grower has the layup. 
Isn't that pretty? You talked about backup players getting considerable minutes. He played just five minutes that first half. Barker three from the deep corner. Johnny Barker with his seventh point of the afternoon. Boy, he knocked it. James continued to shoot well in the second half. Both of them at 75%. Oh, Woods, what a pass. Oh. Dueling, and then it goes to Schumacher. Great interior passing that time from Missouri. One for six from three-point range. John Woods with a spinning move, and Weatherman wound up on the deck, and John Woods. Ben, John Woods, back to the basket, a little spin move, uncontested jump. You think of him as a perimeter shooter, but he doesn't mind putting the ball on the floor. Missouri with three guards on the floor right now, along with Monty Harge and Albert White. Paper wide open from the baseline, shot good. Jeff Paper has five points, and Clarence Gilbert cut him the wall that time. Missouri's hands. Two aim, it's a three-point lead for Missouri again. Now is where it gets tough. Ten run in the last 331. Harge has four fouls. He's with ease them off of their spot. That time he eased them onto the baseline. Albert White, Gilbert wide open, tries a three and knocks it down. And that is a big shot for Missouri as Gilbert gets it. Shelton Wise draws the foul. There's Albert White in traffic. Shot good. Count it, and he was fouled. Albert White with another big bucket, his 19th point of the day, and he's going to go to the free time. He is a junior, and with the Tigers get in trouble, usually find the ball in his hands. And he didn't disappoint. He starts on the outside, two guys inside, Schumacher and White. Six on the shot clock. Schumacher had it taken away, and what a bucket for Jeff Hafer. His seventh point of the 13, and those 13 assists, leading AM. and Smith has a win. Now Parker gets this one down. And we have team points, 14 assists for AM. Albert White and Woods each have 19 points for Missouri. Best for the year. So AM having an exceptional offensive day against Senior from Joplin. They thought Monday he may have broken his leg in practice when he fell. Thrown up by White. Rims out. Schumacher just held his position, or excuse me, Rowan just held his position inside. to get the free throw line. Six seven freshman from Liberty played on an exceptional Liberty team last year. Gets his first point here today. A little different kind of a big, strong player. He can work minutes late in the ball game. A guy that never played. On down, and here comes Missouri now looking for the lead. We have four. four. The Aggies survived the assault with a two-point lead. Brown tried to get it to Joe White, and he didn't see it coming. And the Tigers get And the Tigers are really hurting for personnel right now. Well, a got it into the offensive throw line. Two for four on the line today. Yeah. He breaks the tie. Very quiet here, yeah. It's like watching a guy cut for a golf jam all forward. Parker, their biggest, strongest player inside. Now Woods, heavy traffic, got a layup and ties the ball game. John Woods with his 21st point against Brower. Now dueling lost Cook. He feeds Jack off the ball. Short with the try, and Hayford clears the ball. And here come the Tigers with a minute 21 left in the game. Dueling puts it on the floor, bangs into Lutterman, blocking call on Lutterman. With the ball on the floor, he's Tough to stop in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. The front. Front. And he knocks them both down. It's a two-point lead for Mizzou. 93-91 with a minute. Sounds wide open, but he missed the try. Missouri rebounds it. Keon Dooling came down with it. Now the top lead, Missouri. Cook trying to break down Dooling. Fires a three. It won't go. And rebounded by Wood for Missouri with 17 seconds to play. And the Tigers trying to serve is a 76% free throw shooter. Three for four today on the line and missed. Now Missouri real John Wood. And it's a little smaller, doesn't it? And it's stuck. It was around and finally hung in there. Three-point ball game, 16 seconds to play. Cook got a screen from Shane Jones, picked up by Parker. Blocks one up the way go. Hafer clears the rebound. Seven seconds to play, and Grower is fouled. And it was Jeff Haver, a guy that you talked about in pregame who was there to pick up the missed shot, and the Missouri defense really turned the top. 74% shooter, and could ice the ball game right here. That one probably did. Less than six seconds to up by four, looking like maybe they will survive. Career high for Grower, as he scores his 18th point of the day. And a &M right now needs a bomb, and they need a quick bomb. Cook fires it to the corner. Michael's good. Oh, 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 this one is over. We apologize for Bonnie Bernstein's malfunction with Bill Raftery. This is Kevin Harlan. 18 to 8 over 19th ranked Kansas. Johnny Parker for three and he parries it for the wow. Missouri Tigers. Kevin, they are so confident. Norm Stewart felt they had to have a fighting. 
Dueling to Brower to Parker, who just hit that long range three. Britt Hafer, wonderful pass inside oh, for White. He gets rid of it in such a quick fashion. White, Johnny Parker at the other end. Finds Albert White when he gets hot, baby. Watch out, and he right He's now is hot. Like, he seems to drift in and out of games from watching tape, but today, Dueling and Woods for Missouri. Kansas, the 19th ranked team in college basketball. Gregory Bradford, Chenoweth, Boshi the freshman, and Ryan Robertson. <laughs> well, I think they may be touching up that hair a little bit, speaking of time. Here comes Dueling. He's working on Gregory. Brower inside, they find White. He's been tough. He continues that way with the great pirouette inside. And that's why Grower's on the floor. Gilbert outside, plenty on his shot clock. What a pass by Heaper inside, caught by Dillon. Well, what a Ten left. Here comes Brower. Nice move on Boshi. Boshi bit. Oh. Brower bangs it in. Wow. A little lingerie on the floor there. Wow. What a back... 13 days ago, they met on a Monday night in Columbia, Missouri. Missouri shot 16%, Kansas not much better, right at about 30%. Second half, after a 19-point Kansas lead, Missouri came back to within an for the Tigers, leading 26-14. And inside Pew, but defense by Hafer, the key for the Tigers. He can shimmy with the best of them. He'll drive and slash and take it up in town. What a play, knifing his way into the heart of Kansas's defense. Roll the post by Hart. Brower thought about a three. It's the great move on Boshi here. It's another two. Uh, he bit. Here the ability to, against the zone. You've got to get the moving, a little rotation, the pump. And how about this? And he's a curve. Gilbert and Brower. There's Hafer finding Hart. Nice pass over Chenna with an end. What a great post up. Hart, he can empty a building with that. Now on Brower, knocked away by London, picked up by Robertson. He'll take off, Ooh. knocked away by Dueling. What a play. Great trap set this up as KU at half court. A wonderful close. You can see the size difference. And Robertson, just a sensational effort here by Dooley. Oh, and they start going the other way. It's like a circus inside Allen Fieldhouse. The flying will end is on display. What a game from Lawrence. Roy Williams has the trap, and look at this. Dooley, extraordinary reaction. Came from five, seven feet. He is up by ten. It's Dooley. Side to Gilbert. What a shot over Gregory by the freshman Clarence Gilbert. While well, the teammates through high school and now continuing. A little pull up, Jay. Hold on. Buckle up for Keon Doolin. Oh, what a play. Rocking the rim. Oh, you can't doodle with the basketball with Keon in town. He's got 10 and he's been spectacular. Oh, he put the ball out. And Gregory came over. Here's Brown. Paper. Missouri has played very composed in this game. Hafer drives and takes it up. And he's right in the magic carpet in for two. Action. Bonnie Bernstein has at the half presented by Pennzoil for you with a look at Michigan State and Indiana coming up later on. Good job on that end of it. But this is just great defense to strip. And hold on. Send it in. And we're going to see a lot of that in the next four years <laughs> in Columbia. Yes. Is that impetus? So far of the game, Robertson, better when he's controlling things. And look at this open look, and it took cards away. First time Boshi is ready to knock it down. Norm wants a timeout, I believe, Kevin. White, the Kansas intensity has been turned up and out. Pretty slip pass. Johnny Parker knocks it down again. Not known for his scoring either. And the best package to kick. <laughs> and the ability to stroke that pill. Step by Parker out to Dooling. 16 and a half to play. Oh, oh, Look at oh, him slash oh, inside. Oh, pick what it up. Play. Unbelievable. You Dooling. Now look at this one. you got to pick it all up, huh? A little lingerie lingering and a little kiss at the end. <laughs> he is explosive wow. and coming along. The lead of 14 has been chopped down to three. A three by White. Oh, oh my goodness. An assassin from outside. He's out and put the dagger in. Just a great zone look, Kevin. Again, Kansas is volleyed back and forth. A lot of man-to-man. -man. A three by Grower. Yes! 
and he has not been able to get a look like that, so a disadvantage with the zone. For left arm, he would have gotten away with it. Rauer with a two. <laughs> he knocks it north. He's going to count it for two points. Okay, he now, one on. guy at three, one guy at home loss. Somewhat devastating, I think. Yeah, they crawl back in it so you feel real good. But coming in defensively, taking away the early offensive KU, competing on the opposite end. Uh, a lot of young guys, just things don't go to... Here outside, picked up by Gregory. Trump is inside of Hafer. His fifth block today. Unbelievable. Season. All that opens up to a fact that Kansas may be the most vulnerable they've been in the decade yeah. in the 90s. And yet, look at them. She is just going to be a magnificent coordinator for this team as the year progresses. And Chenoweth, I think uh, his offense is something that we're going to see and enjoy. The Third team parade All-American. Florida Class A Player of the Year. He's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But this week, I have to leave, and that was snuffed at midweek. And Ewing said, i got to stay patient. He's had a great game today. It's 12 point right there. Well, things not going your way. You get a little down in the Boshi. Robertson got a screen from Pugh outside Gregory. Can he hit the three? Oh, what a big shot! What a huge shot for Gregory! And Robertson with a good... Gregory, Boshi's on Brower. Here comes Parker. Chenoweth is on him. Inside, dueling. Oh! White puts it up and down. What a great move by White. Use the rim, too. But the athletic ability, the talent level to perform. Here comes Dooling. Screen from White. Mismatch against Pugh. Dooling inside, up and down. A mesmerizing move. Oh. Dooling knocks it with nothing but time. Oh, it's on the block for White. He's drifting outside. And KU switching to D causes the problems. Harge hits a clutch free throw. You know he's drinking in this game. 62, Bradford, so two freshmen for Kansas. Love to see what great coaches call out of the timeout. Look at this. Great move by Boshi, loose inside. Picked up by Missouri, and out of bounds it goes. I'll tell you, that was pretty. A little side pick and roll. Boshi took it to the rim, but the big is down. 62 to 59, oh. and Bradford makes it a one-point game. What a pass from outside. How about Pugh? He made the defensive stop on White. Trying to run down that clock. I have not seen too many confident guys as freshmen at the point like... Boshi. What a Pretty. pass to Hafer from the best passer in the conference, Albert White of Missouri. I thought you were going to say the country, you know. Boshi, Chenoweth on top, shot clock at 23 for three. Boshi can't make it. Harge comes up with a huge rebound, reeling it in. A nice job by Hafer, too. He, all the white shirts were back. 1-2 at the end of the shot shot. Shot clock sequence. They got White underneath. They got him wide open. Oh, oh and a sledgehammer jam by Albert White. Well, we talked about Boshi, but how about Brian Grauer? What a first half. Uh, doing a wonderful job orchestrating the offense and finding people. Time is not ticking for the Tigers. It is hammering. 53 seconds to play. 66-61. The Tigers stunning the 19th ranked Jayhawks of Kansas. What they wanted to be in communication so important. They empty the basket. They don't get the rotation. The rest simply send it in for Albert White. Up high and holding on to the ball. They want Robertson to do it. He's had a tough day shooting. Don't shoot for three. Picked up inside Brantford. It's off his knee. It's out of bounds. Missouri gets it. And Missouri is very fortunate. Uh, Boshi with a wonderful look. Not the reaction. Hard out of the game. But here's the open look. Goes halfway down and in position. Ooh. And you got, you got a little hand in there. And Bradford a little lament. Dueling is 2-2 two two from the line. And as a freshman, he's got some pressure on him. And he nails that one. Three. A three by London. Rebound by Grower, hits the deck hard, foul on Kansas. Tell you, the little guy comes up with the biggest rebounds. I mean, over four rebounds a game. Now the AD at Clayton High School, uh, they're in the audience here. Uh, this little guy has a wonderful feel for the game. His son, and there's Rich Grower, who coached Steve Stepan. Remember Steve Stepan? Yeah, the Smith, right? The Smith High School in St. Louis. You can hear Norm saying, no run pass. Nice, smart play. Oh, what a run. Understanding the game. Paper has it, fouled by London. With one second left, and this has shaped up for Norm Stewart in his 32nd year. Howard was devoured by the Missouri backcourt, 38-11. It's something you just don't see, but they came out the goal. After them, didn't give them any open looks early. Didn't let them get their confidence level up. 
Missouri and 11 blocks today. And that's it. And the Missouri Tigers pull up a stunning upset of 19th-ranked Kansas, 71-63. to For Bill Rafferty, this is Kevin Arlen saying so long from Allen Fieldhouse. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Out there shortly to Hilton Coliseum. Monday, presented by Bud Light tonight with the Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa as the Cyclones of Iowa State play host to the Tigers of Missouri. Here are the standings of the Big 12 North. Kansas on top and then at 7-3 Missouri and also with the number of 7-3. and three. Had their problems, John. And I think he hit his frustration point in the loss at home Saturday against Kansas State. Totally frustrated by the effort of his ball. Iowa State will get after you, especially man-to-man. -man. They will play off Missouri a little bit and just try to challenge shots when they shoot. Gilbert for three. Good pass. Yep, he got it, and the ball tipped, and that's a nice defensive play. And taken away by White, back on top for Dooling. This is three if it goes, and he got it. Well, the two freshmen is being coached on the sideline before he sits down. Dooling knocks that one down as well. So it's a set a guard, but you know what? A guard didn't make themselves available either. Gilbert way outside. Now, for the trivia buffs, let me tell you, we're here. I think that kick out actually with the woods and White intercepted it. And they are on fire. Gilbert way outside. That's his third three. If you're Missouri again, run the offense if you find Gilbert alone by himself. Man. Woods says, hey, I could do the same thing. Larry Eustacey says, hey, let's call a timeout. This is some kind of start. Curry just on a roll here. This is the second of three hit by Clarence Gilbert. Way outside, this time the penetration. Gilbert by himself again. Credit Albert White. Good with the ball. They've got to help out. White again finds John Woods. Automatic. So there's a break. In. Uh, the head coach just stares at the floor. Woods for three. Six for six. You got a team on the floor right now for Missouri. Gilbert, when here's the high screen and roll, Pfizer doesn't step far enough out. Monty Hart just simply moves out of the way and. You can't leave these guys. The middle's got to be wide open for them. Holds up this time from 15 feet, and he nails it. Judge two had a foot on the line. You know, last week against Nebraska, he hit four threes for 12 points, which was one of his finest performances. White. Same side with Marcus Pfizer. Makes it difficult to double team and get back to your man. Inside, it's White again. He's hit his last couple, and now a uh, 20-second timeout is called by Iowa State. By Johnny Parker. Sixteen, 25%. Great pass. Brower for three, and he nails it. Great decision. Clarence Gilbert simply caught it right back to the passer, the deep. And against Hart, what you have to have is a right jump hook and a left jump hook because he's so tall. Mighty hard with the turner ball inside. You have to be able to take a bounce and jump hook. If you just try to go straight over him, you know, a guy's 6'11", 350. It's too difficult. Well, now he works on the offensive end and scores his second straight hoop. Five of 20 on the night for the Cyclones. Three-pointer on the way, and I'll tell you, this is getting to be unconscious. Eight. Game clock is at 149. Spread the floor, let Doolin go to work. There's the hesitation. That's what he does in the soft, easy touch. Again, those that, re that remember Steve Smith, now in the NBA. Mismatch. Marcus Pfizer, a big man, doesn't want to come that far out. Johnny Parker, about a 39% three-point shooter. He's got a smooth-looking jump shot. And he got a hurry. Four seconds, down to three. Nurse, it'll count if it goes. Well off the mark, and we are at halftime. So let's take a timeout. With our score, Missouri 38 and Iowa State 19. Three-point range in the first half. Let's go back to the studio. Win a lot of games that way, right, Chris? Came out hot and simply it was kind of bombardier to the pilot, folks. Let's light it up from outside. And Clarence Gilbert hit three of them. John Wood steps in. He goes two for three from beyond the stripe. Everybody wanted to get involved. Johnny Parker said, well, why not me? So he hits his only three attempts. Big first half, usually with man. Harge. 
He now has eight points. On Marcus Pfizer's face, but watch him defensively. Once Harge goes for the bump, a little bit of ground given up, and Monty said, and expect the Cyclones to turn it up on the defensive end. Brower, that's the ninth three-pointer for Missouri tonight. Well, that's divided up a little bit. This time it's Hampton. Nice look, and in the transition game, they catch Iowa State napping. That's a nice job for the Tigers. Good lead pass, good look up. Fifteen and a half minutes left in this one. Harge. Johnson came through and tried to knock a tough matchup for Clay Edwards on Albert White. Gilbert. Boy, oh, what a night he had. So quick. You know, haven't been able to get any steals and easy breaks and looks. Whoops for three. Boy, you can't trade them with them, but there's not much you can do when the opposition has ten. Probably frustrated he didn't convert that. Edwards with his first foul. It's the second team foul. player of the year preseason. Has had some great ball games and then some that haven't been so good, but he's really the guy that leads the Tigers. surprised at that being this the home arena he was even walking away from good defense woods for three oh what a back record now the amazing thing about woods and you, and you got to know it when you play him ten and a half minutes left in the ball game 59 38 missouri his first When you play as well, your team gets played the way Missouri has from their guards tonight. It makes everything go. Jalen like Missouri doing a nice job of spacing, spreading the floor, dueling for three. Folks, that is their 12th. One dozen three pointer. Well, he is four of 15 from the field and four of six from the free throw line for 12 points. The lob. And the one he I can't believe he caught it. That thing was headed for out of bounds. Well, the pass by Grower wasn't probably a good pass. If you put it by the rim, it's soft finger roll. Brian Grower feels good because he's got the assist. It's easy to have an assist when you use it. And White will want to go to work against Pfizer. How's that? Well, that, that pretty well answers it, John. It's a pretty high percentage shot, too. Well, you put big on small. And White will want to go to work against Pfizer. How's that? Well, that, that pretty well answers it, John. It's pretty right. The largest margin by Missouri is to win by 16. Before the Nebraska game, which he had nine points, before that he averaged 19 points in the four games prior to that has been outstanding. 320 left in the ball game. It's a 19-point margin, Tigers. The hoop and Ransom. When you look at the scoring tonight, Gilbert with 13. You were one of the guys who made a three, won't you? <laughs> Feel like you're left out of the party. Parker. Oh, he's had a nice night. Set up by the penetration of seven. Falling away and switches it. Wow. One of those nights, Norm Stewart had his team ready after the... Missouri's never won by... More than 16 points, and that's the when they get all the gears rolling. Lead the scoring in this conference in conference games at 74 points of all games. So just run the clock out. Good win from Norm Stewart and the Tigers. Came in and got the job done. We knew they were loose. Iowa State has been struggling. So our final score is 77 to 61. Missouri wins it. Coming up next is Sports Center. For John Sunbold, Ron Franklin, and our entire ESPN crew saying thanks for joining us and so long from Ames, Iowa. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Sports Center, coming up after this message. You see Samson Sooners in that four-way tie for second with Missouri, Kansas, and Nebraska. Oklahoma State's two games out of first, leaving the Texas Longhorns still clinging tenuously. It could end up being for the top seed in the tournament.
And for more on Missouri's up, Missouri has that as well. Now let's go to Bill Dolman for another, and he's opened it up inside for Monty Harge. Monty Harge is a problem for Colorado today. They're going to have to make a decision on how they're going to guard him in the low post. If they double team him, will that be effective? Because when he gets the ball low, he can overpower the defensive center. And Dooling's high school teammates have to take care of business at home, starting with this game today, if they want to win the Big 12 Conference. Harge controls the tip quickly to Brian Brown. The big guy in the low post. And here he is, Monty Harge working against Mosley. That's too easy. They're playing directly behind him, and they didn't get any help. For he loves the run. Three on two. Dueling to the hole. You have to stop penetration. It's very difficult to guard because he's so big. The defensive team has to make a decision on what they're following every time. Grower off the inbounds, the baseline jumper, and it's six to nothing, Missouri. Good execution. Defensive player. Dueling with the second free throw, rolls home for him. He has three points, and Missouri's Levin. Brian Grower for a pull up three. You can count it, it's 10 to nothing. When, when Brian Grower gets his. It's the performance company. If you like to win a trip. A bullet pass to Albert White off the inbound foot. They've scored twice off inbounds. Not the least of which takes really the ball away from Brower as a shooter. White for a three, and he hits it. He can hurt you. As opposed to letting him penetrate. They're four down after opening up down 10-0. Woods nails a three-pointer, though. He and it comes up. Hafer follows. He can't hit it. Woods again gets the roll. Seven for Missouri, 8.45 left. Woods left alone, and it's blocked, but Hafer jams it home! Hafer is active coach. Well, it's amazing that he's withstood this test of time. It really is. He hasn't played much the last couple of games, so it's a big lift for him. And he now has eight. Jeff Hafer got this crowd excited, and we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. be the best shots but he is a scorer seven points in five minutes but there's price nails in three so price is up to his old tricks when they got behind ten to nothing you know and part of that kevin has to do with how well they played at home against them that's woods off the baseline again as they go two on two walls waits for winston nice spin again scores again now that's interesting kevin because the taken away grower gets it back and he has a lane to the basket, but leaves it for Woods to score. Great hands on it, but what he forgot to do was maintain control, and then Brower came right up with the ball and made the assist. Through his hands, but Hafer fortunate to get it back. Now Schumacher with a give and go to Hafer, and he scores with a left hand. Hafer has come. White here has to take over offensively for Missouri. Hafer with a nice first step, and he hits the jumper. He has six off the bench, playing with that thigh bruise. Been to some picks that they have a problem. Hafer with a steal. He'll go for the jam. Left-handed. Be careful. As Colorado starts running him into some picks that they have a problem. Hafer with a steal. He'll go for the jam. Left-handed. Jack Quay Wall, that little about his move here is he took the ball right to the basket to dunk it. There, there was no prettiness at the end of it. Just go up and slam it. Great enthusiasm. And you know, Kevin, one of the things about Hafer is that he is a advantage of that. Uh, the other team ran off four or five <laughs> baskets against us, so it wasn't a great move. But you just don't want to get him. His open area is going to be the corner on good ball reversal. Woods forced his one and misses, and here comes Colorado, but that ends the first half. A three-point Missouri lead. Kenny Price with a big half for Colorado, had 14. Lead is three. We'll have the second half from Columbia, but right now we're going to go to the studio with Doug Bell. Mosley has tied the game, and Colorado with a chance for their first lead, and they have it. You'll go on a retainer basis. That's right. <laughs> 37-36, Colorado. But it was a good effort. A good offensive rebound. Missouri had eight of those in the first half. Gilbert left alone for three, and he drills it. Dueling the 
Gilbert. Dueling played just 10 minutes in the first half. Hafer with a nice drive. The spin doesn't go, but Albert White, I think, is who tipped it in. Parker keeps it alive, but Jones has it. Gives it to Albert White. Didn't see him coming. Gilbert left alone for three. Hits it again. Two in a row for him. The, uh, the problem with that play was that the Colorado player who rebounded at Jones never saw the defense coming. Gilbert. The penetration by Hayford creates the offensive rebound. That's a great tip. He was underneath the basket. He, the, the defensive player, Albert White, came from behind, and Jones never saw him. I love Gilbert. I, I think he's got great potential, and he can really shoot the corner and the angle jump shot. Interesting there, White, with a tip on the offensive glass, then a steal, and an assist. Hafer hits it. What a lift he's given them. Didn't start, but he has to. Well, it's hard to do come right off the bench. He's seven million free throws, <laughs> so he's okay. He really has. It's seven million and two now. And, and neither of them were twin. 15.45 left. We'll come back to Columbia for more Big 12 action after this. Confident young man served with a shot. Double figures his last two games. Albert White makes it a 14-0 run. That's a big-time move right there, uh, is, is a pro move. He steps into the offensive player and then jumps backwards and makes the shot. It's a steal. He's running with Woods, or with Dooling. Now he pulls up, hits it. Hafer has 12 off the Missouri bench. In that particular case, Dooling had a chance to take the break. White hits the three, and Albert White has come alive. Seven in the second half, 12 in the game. The lead is swelled to 18. With a 17-0 run for Missouri, and with 14-18 left, there is a Phillips 66, the performance company. At the end of this break, Albert White is way too open. Uh, Colorado did not get back to the perimeter to guard him, and he's a very fine shooter. You've got to know where he is all the time. Missouri felt Let that happen. Walls had it partially blocked. Watch this dunk. That, that will get uh, Keon back in the game a little bit. Walls made a mistake here. He took the shot. and High school teammate Clarence Gilbert. Now White with a... At the end of this break, Keon Dooling really does get upstairs and actually pulls it down and then dunks it. Dreams. You could see the crowd coming to his feet as he was coming down the floor. They knew what they were in store for. Well, that... Big 12 title with two freshmen starting in the backcourt, but I don't think you're one of them, are you? No, absolutely not. I, those, both of those kids, Gilbert and Dooling, are outstanding players. Up with a steal. Woods with White and Dooling. For Dooling, too high. Great save, though. And Woods hits it. I, I don't know how he saved the ball. He throws the watch. Albert White with his pull-up. He's getting hot. Really heating up. Nine in the second half, 14 for the game. Winston now. They're looking for Price for three out of the corners. And it's just not going Colorado's way. And who gets the rebound? Gilbert. Got upstairs to get the rebound, too. White for three. He's feeling it. 17 for Albert. The run, coach, is 30 to nothing. I don't know that I've ever seen this before. I've never seen 30-point run. And this crowd is loving it. What, what a great stroke Albert White has when he squares up to the basket. Straight points. This is a good shot by Price. Uh, the ball is off the back of the rim, and uh, they're not getting any offensive rebound. And he, he really didn't try to block the shot. I, I, I might have called. Mosley, who has two free throws in the second half, now has three. Colorado's only scored five points in the second half. Underneath, good ball fake. Can't get it, but follows with his own tip. That's called second. Actually, was above the square. It didn't go in, but it was a shot that's very tough to take. Albert has 16. He, he's got a nice bounce to his game. He's got good follow through on what he's doing. He's rebounding very well. Actually, actually I have him for 19 points now. We'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips on the season. Yeah, with just seven points, but a lot of that is due to foul time. 
It's really interesting. So he's got dueling. One on one. Oh, look at that move! That's a new one! Absolutely tremendous. First of all, he comes up with the steal or knocks it out of the hands. And now what he's going to do here, he's going to look like he passes it and takes it to the glass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow is the only thing you can say. <laughs> he's, he's big. He's big. You got to give him 6'3 for sure. Yeah. He's electrified this crowd. 12 points now. Get that ball up. Missouri comes out, three on two. Look at the feed, the wide. He finishes. Will be an even ball up. Missouri comes out, three on two. Look at the feed, the wide. He finishes. Will be an even see anymore. This, this move here by Dueling, where he takes it around his back and then goes in front, is an interesting move. He uh, he makes a great pass at the end of the break also. <laughs> How awesome is that to watch? It's going to be an exciting thing. Johnny Parker hits a three. His first basket of the game. Season at Texas. That could be a game for the championship. Missouri's Norm Stewart, one of the most successful active college coaches, leads the Tigers in the Longhorn country with Albert White, the team's best all-around threat. And freshman Keon Dooling, one of the most heralded recruits in college basketball, who has come off the bench to attend Missouri's tournament hopes. Rick Varsity. As the 23rd ranked Texas Longhorns take on the upstart Missouri Tigers. Two in the backcourt with Hafer, Harge, and White on the front line. And then they've got Brower and Gilbert in the backcourt. League with 15 double doubles has to go against a bigger type player in Monty Harsh. Kevin Monty Harsh goes at seven feet, 350 top of it. Here comes Brower coming off the career high, 27. And into White, and over two Longhorn defenders, and he quickly over the White. sophomore from St. Louis, Brown. Into White, he's got position. Good pass from Brown, good over lead White. into him, good position by White. Manekber White gets good position. The pass, though, is what makes the play. It's away from the defender, makes for an easy hoop man. Well, he is. He's a player that teams have a top time guard. But he has been sometimes lacks the A little dancing inside, but Hafer took advantage of the hard screen, but on top to Gilbert, we still haven't seen doing. White, the transfer from the Michigan Wolverine program, puts it in, and the Tigers again up by four. Known for his defense. As White carries another one. He is now gone. Four of six of numbers as Brower leads him in and drives in the crack and puts up and down. We talked about the explosive ability of Missouri. They were and Taylor brings some energy down, pitches it out. White for three, puts it down. White has put in 11. He has gone five moves, the crossover moves. They play a little two-man game with White. A corkscrew jump shot on Carter is down. Loves to turn back to his right shoulder when he's on the... ...favorites in 1989. Missouri met Texas in the second round of the Midwest Regionals. And Doug Smith, the third player in Big 8 history, to score more than 2,000 points and grab more than 1,000 rebounds, led Missouri to a convincing win over Texas. In that game, Norm Stewart did not coach. And George Schindler. Said John Woods from Texas, from McKinney, Texas. He led Dallas High School basketball in scoring. Then to Missouri, which he picked over LSU. Well, again, the guy that started most of this season until Dueling and Gilbert. In high School All-America. He was a McDonald's and a parade. First team All-America. Went to the University. For games, he hasn't been as good. And so... And he goes into the season season next year again. He'll be one of the preseason picks to be player of the year in this conference. Teams are not open. Where Maneki can drive against other teams, also you run into about 350 pounds. Young Brower next with a big one. And Hard sets a great looking screen. On three by of Missouri. Look at the screen by Hard. How do you get around it? If you run into it, you're too late when you have shooters like Woods and Grower on the outside. But again, the pass is set up. Clack cannot get caught up. You have to chase it to the basket. This game has the feeling of another Missouri upset on the road by Texas. The defense, that's all he said for a month, that's all he worked on, and they start losing close ball games in December. 
Then he said, you know what, just 18,000 shots in one summer. Doesn't surprise you then that he shoots 50. Outside Brown, great move. Hayford, wide right open for three. Longhorn switch to his own ball movement, the quickness. Long time to <laughs> like that. Stewart. Well, one of the great freshman point guards in the country. There's another one in the Big 12 Conference, Jeff Boshi at the University of Missouri. Two great freshmen. The first champion Longhorns up. Not once in the game. Brower for three. Clay pulls it down as the buzzer sounds. Missouri has led the entire way in fighting for a place in the NCAA tournament. Whereas Rick Vaught, Ray Gumbel, and Clark Kellogg will be along with Pennzoil at the half right after this word from your local league 12, Texas. Trailed by only... The double team comes. Oh, terrific pass. Well, the Tigers are tied with Oklahoma in third place. Their RPA rank right there. They're probably good enough right there on a 17. Well, look at the post position with Manecki Will. What a pitch! Manecki runs the floor, he gets good low post, you got a double team and he's a terrific passer. The full Monty only shoots 45% from Fowler. Hards again. Second one. Out to Wood. In the clamp. What a shot in Trent. Wood will look for his shot, Kevin. He will look and clap. It was to be a pass, two on one. Woods with Brower, Woods to the right. Good decision, good body control. Ivan Wagner, good hustle to get in the way. The decision by White, make the guy guard you, and if he does pass it off, but he gathered himself. Patient enough to his temper, in a hurry. The ball rotation, the freshman Gilbert splitters off the hooper. Good pass by Gilbert, good penetration. Another freshman from Fort Lauderdale. He has been terrific for Norm Stewart, and the pass off, the easy two points for Jeff Hayford. He's taken care of his business off the court, and he's been to, he's been up since. Hayford hits it. If yeah, you get in these conference tournaments that play four days in a row, and if you get into this Big 12, now all of a sudden, all, you know, foul. Missouri may be one of those teams on the NCAA bubble, but a win today. Win. It's a team you really don't want to play. They just have a number of weapons and guys that can beat you. They're solid defensively as all those numbers. Pass plays inside. Wagner right on cover. Two good plays. One by Wagner on the steal and Basch other in the paper this morning. Okay. Three feet from Wagner. Good pass. Good angle by Wagner. Good position by Moneki. No help defense. Brower. And a steal. There's Wagner. You talked about him. Texas goal. Showtime. For the first three. Cover your head, baby. Cover your head. One just tied the team. White finds Woods. What a pass by Albert White. And if you're guarding close, good block out. Bad decision by Hard because Wagner is there waiting for Manecki gets the bounce. And Texas, Dueling and Wagner, Hodge and Nam, outside, Woods for three, come on, he puts it down. Clark got caught inside, and we got to get back to Johnny Woods. The basketball, last time he got open for a layup, that time Wagner ran into his teammate Clack. Clack got picked off, Woods, terrific three-point shooter, wants some excitement here in Texas. Here comes play. he'll put up a triple. Well, how about that 56 seconds? It's been great, especially to begin the 20 points, 6 rebounds. When he began the game with his 21st point, he was off the dribble. Slowed himself down, but also gave the long horse cut. Right again, and Missouri leads by four. They've led. Stay with them. Arm Stewart has done another great job with Missouri, and there have been some down times this year. Why hits it again? Some controversy next season, which they overcame, and now they're sailing along. Well, in the second half, 11 points for him for the game. Well, they came in, and again, with the tightness of the defense, but these energy players, the, these movement players, they can mean so much for a team. The Woods puts in his 13th point. by White. This will do it. Hatred at the end of the round, and the Tigers have upset 23rd yeah, right Texas. Can you pencil the Tigers in for the tournament? I think you can. Today, they may have earned a slot, flat for three, as Missouri comes up with a huge win. Beating Texas, 54-47. 47.
solid all afternoon. This Tiger team came in. They knew their backs were against the wall. They wanted to win this ball game. You see the steal by Albert White, the slight decoy, the hit ahead to teammate Jeff Hafer with the finish, and I believe you can put this team in the NCAA tournament. Tigers go to 20 and 7, 11 and 5 in the Big 12. So they come up with gigantic wins in this conference season at Kansas and at Texas. And sure enough, the Longhorns City falls short today in a very happy Albert White and his coach, Norm Stewart. Well, you know the Longhorns are disappointed, but they're still conference champs. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. They'll get ready to go to Kansas City and try to win the championship there. The Tigers win it 54 to 47. Players of the game for Missouri, Albert White, 23 points, 8 rebounds. Chris Mim for the Longhorns, 10 points, 16 boards. 54, 47, the final good. They would go on to win this one by 7. This is their tune-up to the upcoming big time for your matchup between New Mexico and Missouri. Let's send you to Ian Eagle and Jim Spinner. First round action in the West region. Number one, they will meet in the second round and coming up. Connecticut against Texas San Antonio. Hi everybody, Ian Eagle along with Jim. Do pretty well. He's their leading scorer at 16 points a game. He's also their leading rebounder, but keep in mind, he also leads them in assists with three a game. By, by the time this game is up that he has used this season, Davis and Thomas up front with a three guard look. Long, Henry, and Robinson the second. Norm Stewart, he is Missouri basketball as a player, assistant coach, and of course head coach for the last 32 years. His eight-seeded Tigers will send this starting five to the floor. Albert White, as mentioned, one of the top scorers in the Big 12 Conference, joined up front by Monty Harge, and it's Woods, Grower, and Dueling, another three guys. And both teams score in the 70s. New Mexico, Lauderdale, Florida. Jim, you mentioned the fact that this is a young team, and Stewart got this team into the NCAA tournament this year. They're hoping for bigger things down the road, not just a berth, but... White lines it up, knocks it down, and Missouri gets on the board first with a trifecta college transfer. Missouri Tigers, out of the Big 12, received the at-large bid versus 1999 tournament team. Are just 6'11", 335. On the back door feed, White got it to Woods. Good slip cut off before the shot clock runs out. On the interior, Dueling breaking free and a follow from Schumacher. Dueling brought a lot of people with him. When you cut to the basket, you cut strongly. Look at all the guys, the red shirts on one side of the floor. It becomes with the light. Team 7, New Mexico lead. And a steal. Nice full court pressure. 3-1-1. One, one. Robinson on a kick out. Henry for three. That's what Dave Bliss wants to do. Shoot the basketball when you're open. The Tigers have to go a little bit with White. Albert White can't buy one. He is now one of six. What the offense in a matchup with Henry. Jumper from White. Still struggling. I think he's got to take one. Tried to get it to Long. Tuffle for the ball and a break opportunity. Dooling leaning in for the layup. Pretty good effort right there by Dooling to come up with that basketball. He's up for grabs. Hafer with five, makes his move to the rim. And leaves it for Schumacher, the easy deuce. Exactly what he's supposed to do there. You have to drive the basketball. When your key thing there is he's thinking shot before that ball gets to him. Back the other way, Schumacher on the follow. Thomas is supposed to be checking him out. He's not doing a good job of keeping him off the board. 24 to 13, New Mexico. Just under nine minutes to play, first half. The bomb from Woods on the outside, a three-pointer. Little fake. Had some numbers, but it was real bad spacing down the floor. Woods, the jump shot. Back-to-back -back jumpers for John Woods. One of the things he does for this team, he looks for his shot, and that's exactly what he did. Two times down the floor, looking to get shots off. Huggled in past NCAA tournament games, and certainly that's weighing on his mind a bit. His senior season considered among the best players in the nation. He is supposed to perform in these situations as Monty Harge creates some space for himself. On a crossover, White could move to the basket. Oh, that's a beautiful move. Well, New Mexico screen out there on the left side. Woods, the bounce for White. And the bucket. And that one just slid over the rim, but away from the ball. 
Missouri trying to inch a little bit closer. Gilbert the jump shot. Clarence Gilbert the freshman. One of the lost arts in the half a screen too by his standards. And then the penetration, you see the force. They go shirt to shirt with somebody. Bring Davis to you. Dooley. The guy doesn't want to shoot it. Woods, the penetration and the floater. He will, though. He will look to score. A good judgment, too, by Harden. Five seconds. White will put it up. Thomas with the rebound. That's Ball loose. knocked around. And time has expired here in the first half of action. New Mexico will go to the locker room with a 34-28 lead on Missouri. An 8-9 matchup. And pretty much what you expect. Halftime in Denver, New Mexico on top of Missouri, 34 to 28. CBA. Halftime stats, shooting percentage, Missouri at 35%. Look at the free throws they get to the foul line. A good job. New Mexico owns an eight point advantage and White cannot convert on the inside. He just, White gets the roll as he put it up with the left hand. And a great spot. Brower going behind the back. Brower, three-pointer. Got it. There's a shot in stride. Nice little flip pass, too, by Harge. All the good result. Harge on a spin move. Soft touch for the big man. I love the look on his face also. Or maybe a little off balance, a foul call. Watch Harge jump right here. He balances himself and gets some good strength underneath the jump shot. Timeout. 15.58 to play, second half, New Mexico. Foul down deep, at least working Thomas a little. Hafer, baseline drive. Wow, what a White, the follow. What a finish, too, up in the air, over people. And not picking up Robinson, looking for the steal. He'll pick it up. Well, going after the basketball on the offensive glass. One of the things that has changed. Off of penetration, Hafer inside. Albert White. So active here in the second half, a completely different player than what we saw in the first half of action. What he does... Long, pull up for three. Still coming from the outside, long shooting. Brower, the little man. Walk up, lead feed. Clarence Gilbert to finish on the other end. The way to play the point, though, with Brower just then triggering the fence. Schumacher looking to the interior, Hafer backing in. Nice look for Schumacher. Thomas got lost in the defensive assignment. Good haul. It's like hitting a wall. <laughs> I'm going to just go on record right now. If a loose ball comes, it's only 43% from the free throw line. So really not a bad foul. And Missouri finally gets some attempts. He hits one out of two. The first two attempts. What? Ball knocked away by Robinson. The jumper from Brown. Got a beautiful extension on the jumper. Look at a right back pressuring man to man at the point. But Missouri star player Albert White is on the bench with four personals. Very tough angle for John Woods as he gets the deuce. Thomas the tutor, not. Brower has been in there every minute. Monty Hard. Right. The big fella finally gets a soft touch to go down. Good, Good decision here. Go easy. Clarence Gilbert. Can't hit it for three. It came high off the window and had a... Now, he's been sitting on the bench for a while, so he doesn't have the legs. He's not really warmed up. You come off the bench. That was a better one. He has to get the legs underneath you and bend them. And now a five-point New Mexico advantage. Hard banging bodies. Offensive foul. So much of that is timing also from a defensive standpoint. Down. And he's so big, he's getting the attention of the officials. Watch the timing of the Thomas flop. As soon as you get hit... He's not hit that hard, but the timing of it brings the attention of the officials to him. Third personal on will be the fifth. Albert White knocks down. The Florida has now taken the lead on Pennsylvania second half action. Some other scores around the end. New Mexico comes away with it. Henry ahead of the field. What a play to keep it alive. Albert White got back defensively. Brower fires it inside, Harge turns, gets the bucket and a foul. Albert White has struggled a little bit at the offensive end, but here he keeps his team alive with a terrific block down the other end. Harge takes the shot, look at Davis, he gets popped, he's playing pretty good defense, good position, 
The big man size at over 300 pounds clears a 43% free throw shooter. His team is down by three. Soft touch from the line. This is a two-point game. A good screen. Is he moving now? Oh, he moved the arm. Stops the clock with a minute 31 to play in the second. Two bore the Lobos, and they will have to go the final minute 31 without Thomas, one of the elite players in the nation. Chance, watch the right arm. Now he moves it slightly, but the official is standing right on top of him and made the call. Thomas in what may be his final collegiate game, unless New Mexico can hold on. Free throw for Doolin. The freshman cuts the New Mexico lead to one. Only the third quarter of the night for Keon Doolin. He can make it four and does. Two picture-perfect free throws, and we are tied at 59. Dealing with a little bit of pressure with 1.30 to go. Another freshman, John Robinson. Doolin took it away. Dooling on the penetration. White went for the jam follow, and it's rebounded by Henry. What a regroup also by New Mexico to get back and get that. Had an opportunity to take the lead. Well, Dooling came up with the basketball attack. He had his shoulders ahead also, but the pursuit by New Mexico. Walker getting a hand on it, a missed opportunity. Coming up on one minute to play. 59 apiece. Patience and good luck. Henry a three. No good. I don't think that's a good look in this situation. Drifting away from the basket from long, long range. Hard on the blocks with the kick out. Dueling. Trying to give his team the lead. It rings out. Davis the rebound. Two tough decisions at both ends of the floor. Shot clock has been turned off. And Dave Bliss wants to have a chat with his team. Timeout. It goes down without pressure in the perimeter. New Mexico 6 and 0 oh, and games decided by two points or less this season. Final 15 seconds tied at 59. New Mexico probably goes around five seconds or so towards the basket. Long with eight makes his move. Long short jumper. Got it. Down to three seconds. Two seconds. Grower will throw it up. It was blocked. Walker got a piece. And New Mexico has survived. The Lobos move on to the second round in a tight one over Missouri, 61 to 59. Dave Bliss and the New Mexico Lobos for the fourth consecutive year have advanced to at least the second round of the NCAA tournament. A terrific drive by Long down. Look at the hang time. Actually shoots that basketball on the way down. Still plenty of time. The Tigers had a timeout. And there's your reaction by Thomas. He's standing and watching. Missouri did have one final attempt. Ryan Brower from three-point range for the win. And Walker getting a piece. Norm Stewart, 32 years he's been at this. This is his reaction. And that's it. Once again, the final from Denver. New Mexico for the 61 to 59 victory over Missouri. And the Lobos advance to the second round where they will win the game. Kenny four blocks Albert White, 16 points and 12 rebounds in a losing effort. Lamont Long, get up in the air. Long needed that hang time for the short jump shot. He actually shot it on the way down, and that's a winner. Well, Hard stepped in his path. Great concentration down the stretch. Well, well first of all, Missouri gave him the opportunity to play basketball on a scholarship. Came from a small town, Shelbyville, Missouri. You know, the rest is history. Playing for Coach Stewart was a challenge. Sometimes fun, sometimes tough. Uh, he was honest. Uh, he made each of us the best we could be. He treated everyone the same, whether you're an All-American or the last player on the team. He wanted you ready for the next game. How could you be better so that the team would be better? My senior year, we didn't lose many games. I think six total, because practice the next day was really tough. 
wasn't the toughness so much, it was the discipline and the idea that the other team might be stronger than you are or faster than you are, but they weren't going to outwork you and they weren't going to outcompete you. That's one thing I carried through my postgraduate years when I was in medical school. There were guys that were smarter than I was, but they weren't going to outstudy me. You know, biggest lesson I learned from coach was it's not what happens to you, it's how you react. Uh, and so whether being a parent, a husband, uh, running a business, uh, playing sports, uh, being a curator, right? Things happen, good or bad. How do you react to that? How do you learn from it and how do you react? Every day in practice, uh, that's all I talked about. Yesterday was done. Let's learn, let's move forward, and good or bad. And so when you learn those lessons, uh, I carry that through life. Hi, I'm Bill Self, head basketball coach at the University of Kansas. And I'm here to talk about uh, one of your all-time favorites, if not the all-time favorite, Coach Norm Stewart. I've known Coach Stewart a long time, going back to my days as a player at Oklahoma State, where I always loved competing against his teams because I thought he was one of the meanest, toughest, honoriest competitors there was, period. You know, Coach was a unique individual, so anytime we traveled on the road, fans, they didn't like him, so they were on him, but they were on him more than they were on the players. Everybody loved the chance to sit down Norm every time he came to town, and I think deep down, Coach probably loved it too. Uh, we were at Iowa State one game, we had a great team. Uh, we were starting to pull away, so maybe bad calls for Iowa State. It was loud, it was a timeout, and Coach pulled us over and he pulled us away from the bench. And as he was talking to us, there was a gentleman that came down from the stands uh, who was using a few choice words. What the gentleman didn't know was that Coach Stewart was the best of the best. It was about 53 choice words in a row. And being a college student, we start thinking, you know, we've heard of those words before, but never as a noun, as a verb, as a pronoun, as an adjective. So we thought it was about 50 plus words and then he told the guy, get on your tractor and go home because the Tigers are going to win. You know, his name is Storm and Norman, and he is, or was, but he's, most people don't realize he's very tender, he's got a real, you know, emotional side to him, and I think one of his proudest accomplishments is the fact that he was founder, or is founder, of Coaches Versus Cancer. So many years ago when, you know, when, uh, Coach Stewart actually came down with uh, colon cancer, and then subsequent to that, you know, he started this program himself. Where on a yearly basis, he would try to raise funds for the American Cancer Association, and so that has advanced tremendously. So now they have they have raised millions and millions of dollars. When you stop and think about through his efforts in the American Cancer Society, uh, Coaches vs. Cancer has been able to raise over 100 million dollars and coaches such as myself all across America has, has used their platform to uh, bring awareness and raise funds for this dreadful disease. You know I, I travel the country uh, as a broadcaster and in business. When you say University of Missouri they think of Coach Stewart uh, nationwide. I continue to see Coach Stewart at the golf course periodically or at other social events. He's always ahead of me. He's always going to be my coach. Coach, I've been a fan from afar for a long time and, and uh, certainly appreciate everything you've done for our sport, but more importantly, everything you've done for others. Coach, congratulations. Congratulations, Coach Stewart. Congratulations, Coach Stewart. Norm, congratulations on your induction into the Homecoming Hall of Fame. I love you. He is one of the greatest coaches in college basketball history. 731 career wins, eight conference titles, six Big 8 tournament championships. The accolades are generations of Mizzou fans. Norm Stewart is Missouri basketball. As a player, Stewart was a two-time all-conference first team selection, a 1956 All-American, and finished his career as the second most prolific scorer in program history. But he also was a pitcher on Mizzou's 1954 National Championship baseball team. In 1967, Norm returned to his alma mater to oversee the most successful era in Mizzou basketball history. In his 32 seasons as head coach, Norm Stewart won 634 games, eight conference championships, and took his team to the NCAA tournament 16 times. 
Norm was somebody that was bigger than just basketball. He had a great uh, impact. Somebody that uh, I know uh, most coaches look up to. Well, we had some great games. We had some really tough battles. He was a great coach. When you look back upon the plays they had, the way he coached, nothing could really stop this guy. Well, cancer almost did. In February of 1989, Norm Stewart was diagnosed with cancer and missed the remainder of the 88-89 season. Norm fought cancer with the same tenacity he attacked his opponents and won, returning to the sideline with a clean bill of health the next season. It was that battle that inspired, arguably, his greatest impact. I think that, that this, uh, this group has raised $100 million plus through Coaches versus Cancer is a pretty remarkable feat. I had the wonderful experience of being in over 700 wins. I would trade those wins if we could win this one. You know, if we could finish this fight and have no cancer. Coach, greetings from Pittsburgh, Kansas, home of the Pitt State Gorillas. Uh, Melissa and I are sorry that we can't be in attendance, but today is our home opener uh, in Pittsburgh, and I felt like it would be great if I went to the first game. We would like to congratulate you on the unveiling of the Norm Stewart statue today on Champions Plaza. Uh, I know we join, I join uh, your former players and coaches and staff members uh, in thanking you for your contributions uh, to the University of Missouri and Mizzou basketball. And from a personal standpoint, all you've done for us as individuals. Uh, I hope it's a great day in Columbia and best wishes to you in Virginia. Hi folks, it's Bob Costas. I really wish I could be there today for the dedication, but as you see, I'm at the MLB Network, which in a way is appropriate because as many of you know, in addition to his basketball exploits, Norm Stewart was a heck of a pitcher. In fact, Whitey Herzog told me once that he recalled facing Norm in an American Legion game and that he had terrific stuff, and briefly he was property of the Baltimore Orioles before basketball became his career path. And when I think about the various things that I've done during the course of my career, right near the top is the many years I spent as the radio voice of the Missouri Tigers. Late 70s, early 80s, that's when Norm, Virginia, and the entire Stewart family became friends for life and so many terrific games. It was one of the great eras of Tiger basketball. Steve Stepanovich, Prince Bridges, Larry Drew, Kim Anderson, John Sunvold, those were terrific teams. And those battles in the old classic Big 8, Allen Fieldhouse, and at the Hearn Center, man, I'll never forget it. And you can go on and on, and the inscription on the statue says some of it about all of Norm's accomplishments. But what I'll always remember is Norm's personality. Sometime in the early 80s, there was a walk-on on the team, basically there just so that the team could scrimmage and practice. He was a baseball player named Al Hightower, and he never got to play. He was at the end of the bench. The Antlers called for him in their classy and dignified fashion. The Antlers chanted for Al Hightower almost every game, especially when Mizzou got a big lead, and they thought that maybe Norm might look down to the end of the bench and send Al in to play a couple of minutes. So one night, the Tigers are up at home by 25 against McNeese State or some team or other. And the Antlers are chanting for the last five minutes, we want Al, we want Al. And finally, with about a minute and a half to go, Norm beckons down the bench to Hightower and he peels off the warm-up. and the Antlers are going nuts. And so too is most of the crowd. And Norm drapes an arm around Hightower's shoulder, whispers in his ear. And then Al, instead of heading for the scores table, walks around the baseline and over to the antlers, stands in front of them and says, Norm sent me over here to find out what it is you want. What do you want from me? And then he came back. Everyone got a good laugh out of it. Norm put him in the game. He got fouled. He made one of two. One for two is good in baseball. Not so good at the free throw line, but he got his name in the box score. That, as much as the victories and as much as Norm being synonymous with Missouri basketball, that was Norm Stewart, too. Congratulations, my friend. First, congratulations to your coach, Norm Stewart, on this great, great tribute with the statue. I uh, hope it doesn't have a scowl on it, uh, that face that you make. Uh, an unbelievable, intense competitor uh, who's done so much for not only the city, the university, 
the state of Missouri, but to me, the whole nation, and especially with the coaches versus cancer. Well, what a great, great tribute to a man who I've had the honor to, to meet and to follow his footsteps at, at Missouri. It was an honor for me to be the coach there. And to see you having a day where a uh, statue is being displayed, uh, no one's more deserving than you. Hey, Coach Stewart. So awesome to spend a couple minutes here with you and congratulate you on this beautiful statue and for everything that you've meant to the University of Missouri, college basketball, and coaches and people across this country. It was an honor of mine when I got to coach a team in front of you, and it's been a greater honor to call you a friend. Much respect to you. What a great day of joy, great day of celebration, one of the great men to impact our people, our community, our profession, and Missouri in such an unbelievable way. Much claps to you. Love you, and can't wait to see you. Coach Stewart, Virginia, hope you guys are doing well. I'm very proud of you, very happy for you. I think it's great they're going to have a statue of you outside the arena. You meant more to Missouri basketball than no doubt, meant more than anybody ever has. You did a great job. You were a pain in the tail to coach against, and except for one other thing, I had a tremendous amount of respect for you, and we have been good friends. I uh, hope it's always a great day for you. hope your family's there. I hope you and Virginia really feel good about all the years and all the service you gave to, uh, to the Tigers. Uh, appreciate you as a friend. Appreciate the note I get every now and then and really enjoyed competing against you and knew that we had to be on top of our game. You're a credit to what you did at Missouri, and congratulations to you, Coach. Look forward to seeing you. He is one of the greatest coaches in college basketball history. 731 career wins, eight conference titles, six Big 8 tournament championships. The accolades are endless for Norm Stewart. Coach Stewart, I mean, he won a lot of ball games and, and did it for a long time. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just hope to be here half as long as he is and do what he's done. I'm from Shelbyville, Missouri, and uh, I'm, I've never forgotten my roots. I had a great upbringing, had wonderful parents, had a lot of people around me that uh, provided me assistance, provided me leadership, guidance, and then the same thing happened then when I went to the university. And so, again, it just comes back to taking advantage of the opportunities and, and uh, that people present to you. The measure of this man comes not from the numbers, but the players he produced. Using a tough love style that helped earn him the nickname Storm and Norman, Stewart was determined to make players better than they were when they arrived in his program. He approached his profession as a teacher, and every day was his classroom. Uh, we might not have liked it every day, uh, but we learned a lot. If a person wants to be helped, there's somebody to help him. And uh, most of, the, I'd say 98% of my players or I say my players, people that played during my coaching career were guys that wanted to get better. Back in 2004, on the day of the final game in the Hearn Center, I got a chance to sit down with Coach Stewart for a good 20 minutes. I asked him that day what he thought his legacy was, and honestly, Norm didn't have an answer for that question. You see, he just doesn't think that way. But as we've gotten years and years out from that conversation, it's become apparent to me at least exactly what Norm Stewart's legacy is. You find it in his former players, the guys who still love and adore Coach Stewart years and decades after they played their last game for him, and those same people who live out the life lessons Norm taught them every single day. Well, he's the best. I mean, I would do anything in the world for Norm Stewart. I mean, he gave me an opportunity to come to the University of Missouri and uh, uh, get an education, and without Norm Stewart, uh, Gary Link wouldn't be standing here right now, so I owe an awful, owe an awful lot to him. 98, 99% of the guys that played uh, during the, my coaching career, uh, if you look at them today, they're people you'd like to be around. You know, he had, he had great kids to work with, and then those kids have been great uh, people in society. And that right there is what Coach Stewart thinks about the most as he enjoys his retirement. The people he encountered along the way and the lives he affected mean so much more to Norm than the wins and the trophies. You know how fortunate you are when uh, you've had the opportunities that have uh, been presented to me. I reached out to him early on, and he has been nothing but uh, a support, uh, someone I could call and ask 
for advice. He recruited well. He had great teams. He had great players. Uh, he had people that were part of the community. And really his name is synonymous with Missouri basketball and really the University of Missouri. And uh, that association, depending upon what you do with it, allows you so many opportunities. And uh, I, I think that's the most memorable, just the people. Uh, everything's about people. Norm Stewart, a true Mizzou legend, if there ever was one. I'm Ben Arnett for the Mizzou Network. Missouri, it is my pleasure to induct Norm Stewart into the Mizzou Homecoming Hall of Fame. Andrew, Peggy, congratulations. I'm flattered to be on the dais with you and honored in the same group. So it's wonderful, wonderful to have you back in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, the one thing you should never do is to give a coach, and particularly an old one, a microphone. <laughs> have you all got anything planned? No, they told me I had uh, two minutes. But I want to tell you, since I've been here, I've had three glasses of water, two things of tea, and a cup of coffee. So I'm not going to be here longer than two minutes. <laughs> I, I must make some comment that Andrew and Peggy, Andrew, you said... Your English wasn't that good, and so you went into math. I didn't know either one of them existed. <laughs> so I had a little basketball. Thank God. If you look back in the history of this uni great university, you see all the wonderful, wonderful people that have been so successful, uh, politicians, entrepreneurs, business people, doctors, lawyers, everyone. Uh, and yet, uh, there's something that can bring everybody together, and that is a sport, whether it be basketball, football, uh, tennis, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and in a way, if we keep this in perspective, in a way, it's kind of sad that we pay more to see a basketball game than we do to go to zoology class. But you can get more people to go to a basketball game than you can to the zoology class. Uh, there's so, so many things that I'd like to say. I, so much of it is involved with the people that you've had the good fortune to cross paths with the leaders here at the university uh, through the years, uh, all the leaders across this state, across this country. I am immensely proud of so many things that have been able to come my way. Uh, the, the best thing that ever happened to me uh, was when I came to the University of Missouri, and that was second. The best thing that ever happened to me was when I got here, I met this little girl, and I want to tell you, if you want to be successful, meet a little girl like Virginia Cole Zimmerle, because she has been the one that should be here. And I want to remind you, I have a film of what you said. And <laughs> We were, uh, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I love to uh, tell stories. We were on an airplane. Our, our son, as a captain with Delta Airlines, been off the earth. He's three years younger 
uh, than his actual Earth age because that's how many hours he has flown. <laughs> if you take if you take uh, 24 hours a day and multiply it times the weeks and times the years, he has been off the Earth over three years. But uh, we we took a trip so that he could be the captain while we were flying. We're in the we're sitting in the airplane and we landed, and uh, the person that was in uh, with us. Uh, happened to be a medical uh, doctor, and there was a, an emergency on the plane. So we got to meet the doctor through the medical emergency. It wasn't mine. But uh, we were talking, and, and she was telling us that they had been married for a long time. And I said, how long? And she, she said, 40 years. And I said, that's just wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. 40 years. I said, could I tell you something without taking away from your wonderful relationships? And she said, well, sure. I said, we've been married 61 years. <laughs> and she said, all right, well, I want to ask you a question. Has there ever been a time when you just wanted to wash your hands? And I said, yes, last night. wonderful thing about it is again to all the all the wonderful people I'm so proud of the players and the, and the people that I had the opportunity to represent you saw two people there here one is the board of curator John Sunbold a great player I didn't let him shoot enough uh, the other is Dr. Greg Flaker one of the leading cardiologists in the Midwest and in the United States and uh, I can't believe that you've actually turned 40, Greg. <laughs> yeah. He's actually just about no <laughs> sooner. <laughs> but on behalf of my wife and my family, thank you for this wonderful honor. Uh, this is a great place. And I want to add one thing in closing. When I came here, from a small town, Shelbyville, great town. I was uh, told by an individual, uh, everybody was telling me, you know, and, and you know everyone in a small town, uh, where to go to school. I was told by one individual, don't go to the University of Missouri. I said, okay, why not? He said, well, it's so large you'll get lost. And I said, well, you know what? I think I'll go ahead and try it. And if I do, you come and find me. <laughs> so it is a place, it is a place and it can be imposing to, uh, to a lot of people, but it's a great place and you won't get lost. There's a lot of, there's a lot of great people. There's a lot of support people and uh, it used to be, you could talk about these things, it used to be a great party school, but I don't, <laughs> I assume we can't say that anymore. <laughs> I, think, I think that's why my recruiting went pretty well with some of the players. <laughs> uh, Thank you. So many people I've seen and see all the time. Nice to see you again. Welcome back to the homecoming. And uh, let's get us a win tomorrow. All right. Mizzou basketball was hard-nosed and competitive, and they were a mirror image of Coach Stewart. I was a player for Coach Stewart, 1979 to 83. It's just exciting to see how one man could kind of be involved in so many people's lives and for so many years be involved in the same university and have such a positive impact on it. It's, 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 it's a time for me personally to just kind of reminisce and see some of the old guys and some of my old teammates and, and just see a, a man that has positively influenced not only a lot of the players he coached, all the players he coached, but 
the, uh, the whole the entire university. It's a big deal. He was committed to the to the University of Missouri, and and he's being honored for that. And it's just nice that uh, you know, over the all all the years, 40 years or whatever it's been, 39 years he's been involved in the university that he he, he gets recognized for his uh, many accomplishments. It's a uh, long overdue honor. Um, Coach Stewart uh, is. Missouri basketball. He, he really uh, helped bring the program, build the program to, to what it is today, and it's just a tremendous uh, tribute to, uh, to his legacy.